Given a non-empty array of digits representing a non-negative integer, plus one to this integer, how can you do that? That's about today's video. Let's get into it. Hello everyone, uh, this is Steve here. Today we're going through legal problem 66 plus one. This is very classic interview question. Oh, it's, it's been um, lead code for a very pretty long time and a lot of people like it and dislike it as well. This is a um, kind of tricky problem. It looks very easy, but um, it takes quite some thought to really get your solution accepted on lead code. Okay, now let's take a look first. Given a non-empty array of digits and representing a non-negative integer, remember this integer is non-negative, plus one to this integer. Okay, now let's take a look. The, the digits are stored such that the most significant digit is at the head of the list and that each element in the array contain a single digit. This is key too. Every single element is only containing one single digit. And also a very good, a very important assumption here, it lays out, you may assume the integer does not contain any leading zeros except on the number zero itself, which means the very first number, the very first element will guarantee not to be a zero does not contain any leading zero because mathematically a leading zero as a number, it doesn't mean anything, right? All of those leading uh, zeros could be trimmed off. All right, that's what it means. So the first number will not be a zero and the zero could occur in any other places, right? Zero could be here, zero could be here. It, it all has a meaning. Okay, this one, two, three, it, mathematically it just means 123. So plus one to 123 is 124. And still 124 is represented in an array format. Every single number is a digit, right? Is a digit of the final output number the, from the original input plus one. So this is one, two, four, still an array with the most significant digit as the hat of the list. That's, that's the idea. Second example, very similar, 4,321 and plus one is 4,322. So the array represents the integer 4,321. That's the problem. Okay, with the problem understood, let's think about the possible solutions. Of course, number one is that we can just uh, convert, we can parse all of the array, this given array, all of the digits to form a number, right? We can say the very, the very last number plus the second last number times 10, then the third last number plus uh, times 100. We can continue to do this and then form, we basically pass this given array into the actual integer number. What's the problem with that? So for the max integer, integer, let's say type it integer max value. The max integer value in Java is this number. Hope you guys can see it. This is the max integer value in Java. So you see how many digits are there total? One, two, three, three times, three times three is, there are only 10 digits here, which means transformed into this context, which means the array length, as long as the array length is greater than 10, it's already exceeding the max value of integer, right? Of course, you, if you think you can use long, but still long is pretty limited. Let's see, max value of long in Java. Max value of long in Java is this. This is the max value of long. How many digits are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six times three is 18. 18 plus one is 19. So trans transform that into this context. If we have an array of 20 digits, that's already exceeding the max value of long. So Apparently this is going to overflow, right? If we just uh, brute force transform every single digit and form that into the actual value, the actual integer, we're going to overflow because if the given digits exceeds 20 digits, then we're going to overflow, right? So apparently that's not going to work. Then let's take a look at how about we just, we don't do that. We don't transform that into the actual digits. What are the possible solutions? What are the possible cases? Okay, now let's take a look at here. So saying here, one, two, three, let's just use one, two, three. One, two, three, plus one. Okay, this number plus one, easy, right? 
we just do one, two, four. That's it. That's the final result. We'll iterate through right to left because the left digit, it, the, the, very, the digit on the very right end is the least significant digit, which is where we shoot plus one. So this is one case, which means there is no carry, right? But say if we have one, two, nine, and this one plus one, what are we going to do? It's going to end up with this, right? But is this correct? This, let me highlight in red. Is this number correct? This is violating the rule. Each element in the array contain a single digit. So 10 has two digits, which is violating this rule. That means we will do what? We will, instead of putting a 10 here, we should keep a zero over there, but put a carry, right? We will have a carry over moving from the right end towards the right minus one. We're going to be to make it to be three, right? Instead of 10, because carry is just a one, right? So this one becomes one, three, zero. This is going to be the correct answer for cases like this. If one to nine, nine plus one equals to 10. 10 is two digit number, right? We cannot put a single 10 in this position. So we need to carry, to move forward this carry towards the next significant digit, which is this one. Okay, this is another case. Then what about this, nine, nine, nine? Which means we will carry, this one is going to be a 10, 10 carries forward and then nine plus another carry, which, which gives us 10 again, right? This nine will have another carry. So this nine becomes a 10, right? So which means all of this become, all of this become, all of these three nines become zero. And then what we'll have to do next is that we need to add a one at the very left end of this, of this array to make it the correct answer. Right, because 999 plus one equals to 1000. With that said, we can take a look how we can solve this problem in a very smart and efficient way. So basically this problem boils down into two use cases or two possible cases for us to come up with a solution. One case is this, it's all nine. So no matter like there are 10 billion lines, the length of the array is 1 billion or whatever. How, regardless how big that is, that's totally fine. In that case, if this is all three nines, we know the final result is going to be 1000, which means all of the all of the training numbers after the first digit is going to be all zero. That's one case. And everything else falls into another case, which is all of this case. As long as any one of them, any other digit, is not a nine as long as there is a non nine digit in the given array then we can do what we can just do plus one and return is that right let's 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 add one more case here so here say if we have one nine nine then plus one in this case is going to give us 200 right so how do we do that first step we're going to have one nine ten so this 10 needs to carry one forward right so this one needs to needs to become one ten zero right so this one needs to carry forward one so this one becomes this one ten is a double digit number it's violating the rules so this one becomes a a nine a, a zero right this one becomes a zero and then it can it has one carry so this one plus one so this one becomes a two then we can just return. We'll just simply return, right? This one becomes a two. This one becomes a two, we can just return, right? We're finished, we're done. There are a total, only two cases. One case is that the given digits array, it's all nines. In this case, what all that we need to do is we need to flip all of the nines to zero and add one to the very significant, to the very left end of this digits array, right? And everything else falls into another category, which is whenever we find 
a nine nine digit, we can just plus one to that digit and return return the the changed digits array. That's it. I hope that makes sense. If that does, let's put that into code. I think after putting it into code, things will make more sense if you look at the code. All right. So as as I said, we're just going through instead of left to right, we're going through right to left, and check when we need to have a carry. Right. So let's have a length digits length. We'll start from right to left because on the very right end it is the least significant number where we can plus one. Um, int i equals to i length minus one i greater than or equal to zero i minus minus what we'll do is we'll check if this digits we'll check right the only difference is whether this is a nine only nine matters in this case okay let's see if digits is smaller than nine that means it's not a nine the only possible 10 digits are zero to nine there is no 10 there is no possible 10 because it says the and each element in the array contain a single digit. Each every single element contains only a single digit, right? So there's only 10 possible options, 0 through 9. OK, so we check if digits is smaller than 9. So the, the difference is only 9 or non-9 nine digits. OK, now if the digits are smaller than 10, then it's going to be happy, easy. We we'll just plus 1 to this, and we can directly return digits. We just return this array. That's exactly what we wanted, right? So say here, this, we start from the very right end. 3 plus 1 is 1, 2, 4. So we got here. We plus 1 to this digits. Here, we plus 1 to this digits. Then we can directly break. Break out of the code. We just return, right? Let's take a look at this one. So if this is 1, 2, 9, which means we start from the very right end, we got it. This is not... This is not none nine. This is a nine. So what are we going to do? In that case, we'll do digits. We'll put that one to a zero, right? Then we'll have a carry. We put this one to a zero. Then we will have a carry. That means we'll just let the for loop to continue drive through this. So one two nine, one hundred twenty nine plus one, we get one thirty. Then we can break out. That's it, right? That's the inside the for loop. And then let's take a look at this case, which is all nine. What are we going to do here? As we said, we just flip all of the nine digits into a zero. That's what's going to happen, right? So it, it's never going to hit into this branch because all of the digits are equal to nine. So it's never coming into this for loop. So this code is going to set all of the digits, all of the digits that are nine into a zero. And then we need another code, which is, we'll just call it a new number, new number, copy this. And the length is going to be plus one. By default, once you initialize a new array, every single element is going to be initialized with zero. So in that case, what we need to do is that we only need to set the first one to be a zero. Then we'll just return. That's it. Right? Think about this. This is all nine, right? This is all nine. Then we just, uh, it's never coming into this for this if branch. Instead, it's always because every single digit is not smaller than nine. So it's always setting every single digit to be a zero. And then it finishes. This for loop is coming out to here. Then we know we need to plus one to the very left end. That's what we did. We, init we initialize a new array with length plus one. This is length is its current given original input digits array, which is three. So three plus one is four. This is new array. And as I said, all of the new array I, I initialized with every single element to be a zero. So we don't need to reset these, all of these values. The only one that we need to reset is the very first one. That's the only case. So we set the very first element to be a one. Then we just return. That's the algorithm. Very beautiful and elegant. Let's hit submit and see. Okay, very quick. It's 100% because it's super fast. The uh, time complexity is just O n. Let's put it here. 
time is just O n. n is the length of the digits. Space complexity is O one, right? We we don't use any extra space. The given input doesn't really count. That's it. We just basically、um, divide all of the use cases into two categories. One is every single digit is nine. The other, all of the other use cases fall into non nine categories. This is a a big shout out to this user, the most highly voted answer. My simple Java solution. This guy Dia,、uh, very simple and straightforward, elegant, very elegant solution. If you like this video, please do me a favor and hit the like button. That's going to help a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Um, and also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. That's going to help a lot. And tap the little bell notification. I really appreciate it. If you have any comments, questions, just leave me down below in the comment section. Really appreciate it. See you guys in the next video.